A charming fishing village close to Cape Town with a view to die for. A homeowner's dream, except these people don't own their homes or the land they live on. Elizabeth's been here for 15 years. She's still waiting for the government to help her build a proper house. They could at least think about how we live. We're getting chased away from here. They must give us another house better than this one. I just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. She's just one of millions of South Africans still living in shanty towns, even though the government vowed to get rid of them after apartheid. It's built nearly three million houses in the past 15 years, aimed at the poorest, mainly black communities. Yes, because I know all the Mason is like this, because the kitchen is that side and the bathroom is that side. This and Elizabeth is one of the lucky ones. She and her family will soon move into their new house after 17 years on a waiting list. Well, I'm very happy about it because I will at least don't have to put buckets for the rain drops when you sleep and you won't get wet. <laughs> but a real roof over her head won't solve all her family's problems. This settlement is 40 kilometers outside of Cape Town. You must get up early, extra early. When I live here, when I work in Cape Town, I've got to wake up at 5 o'clock. And taxis is expensive. That the housing for the poorest people is further away from work than anyone else. This means that the proportion of the wage of South Africa's working class spent on commuting is the highest in the world. There's no commuting for Elizabeth as she doesn't have a job. Finding work is difficult when you live out in the sticks. But for her and her family, having four solid walls around them will at least be a start.